Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. The division, therefore, between uh, 9-11 Truth and the peace movement, anti-war movement, was always a crippling flaw. It was a division uh, which made the peace movement impotent because it meant that they could not challenge the uh, reasons, the justifications offered by the Bush regime for everything that they did. Remember the, the Bush regime once asked, why are you cutting health and education? And they said, well, after 9-11, we've got to fight the global war on terror, don't we? So this became a universal reactionary uh, alibi for the Bush regime. Uh, now, however, what's the situation? Now that you've got Obama in office, as we've been noting in the past uh, month or so here on this program, You've got a situation where the peace movement, the anti-war movement, refuses to demonstrate for peace because it would be an embarrassment to their darling Obama. And this extends to the peace fakers at Code Pink, Peace and Justice, Peace Action, and so forth. And the litmus test was who supported Cindy Sheehan going to Martha's Vineyard to protest Obama in the same way that she had protested Bush in Crawford, Texas, four years previously. And the honor roll is short. It's the Iraqi veterans against the war. It's veterans for peace uh, and a very few others. Local activists from New England, Act Independent, certainly gets a prominent place uh, on the list for supporting this. Uh, And uh, I've been glad to support it myself. So, therefore, uh, we have a situation where the peace movement has essentially gone AWOL, and what you've got left is the people doing the main part of the work of the peace movement are people left over from 9-11 truth. Now, I would say the imperative is this. We've got uh, General McChrystal, the uh, hand-picked war criminal that is now running the show in Afghanistan. You remember, he's the guy who set up the torture chambers in Iraq. Uh, and indeed invented al-Qaeda in Iraq, and probably invented this guy Zarqawi, uh, who is uh, now no longer with us. Uh, McChrystal is going to deliver a report in the next week or ten days in which he's going to ask for more escalation. In other words, there's already an escalation, 20,000 under Obama. McChrystal will ask for anything from 20,000 more up to a doubling. It depends on how weak he thinks Obama is. Uh, he'll demand the most that uh, he thinks he can he can get, and Obama will be in bad shape. There's a uh, an ugly mood about this in the uh, House of Representatives. Some of these fakers like Pelosi realize that given their multiple betrayals on all other issues, including this one, um, they're going to have a very hard time getting more support for an Afghan escalation. Pelosi said yesterday that support for the Afghan war is waning in the House Democratic caucus, uh, so that's the overall tendency. Therefore, the imperative is to revive 9-11 truth in the spirit of Charlie Sheen, to revive the peace movement, anti-war movement, uh, following the line suggested by Cindy Sheehan, which is to attack Obama. She came out with a very good uh, paper, which we read your parts of a couple of weeks ago, saying Obama's speech in Phoenix uh, at the end of August, was absolutely channeling Bush and Cheney. It was a warmonger tirade. It was a bellicose, blustering speech saying, we're going to conquer Afghanistan because if we don't, there will be a new 9-11. So uh, let us now learn the lesson. Uh, given the fact that uh, Cindy Sheehan has uh, uh, supported 9-11 truth increasingly and, and uh, is now in full support of it. This opens the idea of having uh, a new campaign, a new left flank against Obama, the anti-war flank, in which the 9-11 people would join with the peace uh, activists uh, and actually attack the premise, because Obama is still using the same premise. This is the one area of his demagogy where the 9-11 myth still bulks large. So therefore, if you want to argue, get out of Afghanistan, uh, it takes you back immediately to 9-11. So I think a certain um, revival of interest in 9-11 is certainly in the cards, and it's desirable because it adds to the effectiveness of whatever can be done uh, to organize these demonstrations. I would again repeat, holding demonstrations in Washington on weekdays is not serious. And the people who have set this up for the 5th and 6th of October should really ask themselves, fine, do that on the 5th and 6th of October since that is now practically at hand, but then we've got to have something on a Saturday in Lafayette Park across from the White House that will challenge Obama directly because he's now the top warmonger. It's also interesting, Obama 
at the time of 9-11, of course, embraced the CIA blowback theory of 9-11. Blowback, of course, is the thing that you hear from somebody like Ward Churchill or Jeremiah Wright. Uh, and uh, it means, you know, you're an imperialist, so therefore they come after you, right? You, uh, you're a little Eichmann. Uh, you bomb them, they bomb you. That, that 9-11 is the just punishment and retaliation from the suffering third world people for the crimes of U.S. imperialism. Well, that's an interesting story, but that's not how it happened. It's rather the retaliation of the CIA, the DIA, the NSA, the Pentagon, and so forth. Uh, that is the story of 9-11. That's where it comes from through 25-plus drills on the day of. And look, look in the uh, Look in my own book, uh, 9-11 Synthetic Terror, and also look in the various editions of Zero, the book published in, uh, in Europe, and you can get a, a lowdown on that, particularly in, in the Italian edition. And I think some other editions are, are forthcoming or will be. The Zero movie continues to atta attract attention. It was just shown, shown here in Washington uh, last night for the, uh, the eighth anniversary. So... Revive 9-11, revive the peace movement, but not separate, uh, merged. And remember, the 9-11 truth movement was always the brain of the peace movement. It was the peace movement with a brain was called 9-11 truth because it was willing to understand things through their causes rather than simply get out there and whine about giving peace a chance. It said, this all descends from 9-11, <clears throat> therefore let's go to the root source of all this, and if we can discredit 9-11, the entire edifice of the wars comes crashing down. Now, having said all this, what's the role of these Tea Party uh, people? They are coming to Washington, D.C. on September 12th. This is going to be the Tea Bag Weekend. They've been getting uh, indoctrination, I'm afraid, at the uh, Washington uh, Convention Center and some other places in the past um, – couple of days, started coming into town on Thursday. Uh, this is an example of the Republicans uh, doing what the Democrats have done. The Democrats did it vis-a-vis -vis the peace movement. You take a popular movement and you turn it into uh, a bunch of uh, water carriers for your own uh, election electioneering purposes. The Republicans are trying to do the same thing with some success. That is to say, at the uh, April 15th uh, demonstrations against Obama, and then during the town halls, you had a lot of people coming forward and saying no to Obama and no to his plans for health care. Noting this immediately, you've got Republican think tanks, reactionary think tanks, right-wing radicals, and uh, all kinds of uh, Republicans in drag coming forward to put themselves at the head of this movement and try to turn it not, in, not only against Obama, but that you're going to vote Republican in the fall of next year. We'll be back in a minute.